old people don't understand qada and qadar. Uh, to try to explain this to a child uh, is going to be v- very challenging and it's case by case I, I mean, because of the sensitive uh, of this matter being so sensitive uh, you have to be very uh, selective in what you use as uh, terminology with a child you face this when you're talking to an adult who is not very uh, well versed on Islamic Sharia and all that and his knowledge is not too deep so you you uh, you're very selective and very careful because this matter if it is not uh, explained properly it can result in the person becoming extremely confused and since since this matter relies almost totally on belief in the unseen and that this matter regardless of how well spoken the person is will not be uh, or cannot be perceived because our minds are limited it's a very very challenging issue to address it with a child the only thing you need to talk to the child about and instill in their mind and heart is that everything is known and predestined by Allah. As they grow, because at that age, regardless of how old that or how young that uh, child is, until they reach a certain age, it's only then that they will say, okay, what about what I'm doing? And then the issue of free will and uh, forced to, free to do, forced to do, that's when they will start asking these. But at young ages, it is enough to instill that it is Allah Azza wa Jal who had predestined everything based on His knowledge, capability, justice, and mercy. We need to instill these qualities among other qualities, but these in particular need to be raised very strongly when we're talking about predestination because without having these present in the mind when you're talking about this issue it will not be understood I hope this clarifies it okay now you have to differentiate between addressing a believing child and a non-believer the believing child we will stress and rely on the factor of faith belief in Allah and this should be the emphasis a non-believer who does not believe in Allah and thus does not believe in his qualities that we mentioned is very diff- it's very difficult for them to understand based on them not having this uh, conviction in their hearts about the creator and how he acts y- you know we're talking about these issues are talking about the qualities of the creator not the essence of the creator right Yani the essence of his existence is what I mean. So they have to believe that Allah Azza wa Jal does not act in any way or form in an unjust or unmerciful way. Until they believe in these as a foundation to the conversation, then it is impossible to make them understand Qadr. It is not, it is not easy to address this issue with a believer who does not remember these two qualities in particular, that Allah is fair and Allah is merciful, despite of what at face value appears to be an evil uh, event, natural disasters of all different forms and types. If, they, if people don't remember that Allah is just and He is merciful and He is wise and everything that takes place must be understood in light of these qualities amongst other qualities, then it becomes extremely difficult to handle that situation of predestination. So, uh, when we, my advice is that if you were to be asked about these natural disasters, for example, by a non-believer, to lay this foundation is to say that we firmly believe as believers, as Muslims, we firmly believe that the actions that take place have a foundation of mercy, justice, and knowledge, and wisdom. And if we don't try to understand matters based on that, 
then we will stray away. We will deviate. See, you, you cannot debate with someone and you don't have co common grounds with them to refer to. What common grounds are you having with someone who doesn't believe in Allah and his qualities? Whilst your conviction in a certain matter is totally based on that. 